I just want to say congrats to Northwestern on a great year. They're a great opponent and, you know, just a classy bunch. Great fans, great coaching staff, and, uh, you know, all their seniors. Uh, congrats to them. I'm sure they're going to do great things in life with a hell of a degree from Northwestern University. Uh, I want to say thanks to everybody uh, for running the tournament. Uh, David Nieder, uh, our game day management is second to none in the country, and they just won. They run one of the best tournaments in Division One, um, but I cannot tell you how gratifying the last two weeks have been to me. Um, just, just a great team, uh, great senior leadership. They all bought in. You have a storybook. Somebody needs to write the story. One of you need to write the story of this year, and her, and Jayla, and everything that we went through. And uh, I just—it's just—it's still an unreal feeling to sit here knowing we're going to Oklahoma City for the 14th time in our um, time here at Alabama. Start with Kate. Uh, come on, Tana and Jenna. On him, I talked to Allie before the season. We talked about the video, the first video that Allie himself posted. Allie said the video of the road to OKC starts now. So what are the emotions and motives for both of y'all? Y'all done that and both played a big part in this game today to get y'all back to the city. A roller coaster, I'll say. That's, and like Murph said, we have done everything in that roller coaster to stay grateful for what we have here and the people we have. And we've just, our whole season has been about trust and keeping faith. And I'm really thankful that God put us in situation with each other to be here and just give everything we have. It's been awesome, and we've went through a lot of adversity, but I think that's what makes us special, and that's what makes us great. That's why we love each other so much. Yeah, it's been on the forefront of our minds every single day. That loss last year in regionals, that sticks with you, and it motivates you, and so we use that to fuel our season and to get the young ones to buy in to the goal that we spoke about every single day at practice and every single game. Edwin. Jim, not really a home run hitter, but take us through that. Yeah, so I knew I had to make an adjustment, and honestly, I was thinking hit a hard ground ball. That's what our plan was today, and so I knew I needed to make an over adjustment. So I split gripped. Um, I went with something that Coach Alley had told me, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to buy in right here. And so I widened my stance out, tried to hit a ground ball, and I was lucky enough that it put a good shot on one. And I honestly saw it curving towards the foul line, and I was like, please, Jesus, let this ball stay fair. And I've seen that ball go foul so many times, and I'm so thankful that it stayed fair today and got to hit off that pole, so that was a cool feeling. I'll tell you what I thought about during that. Um, <laughs> I thought that there, there's nobody more deserving of a situation like that before. And when the ball came off her bat, I knew it was going out just because of the faith that she puts in her teammates and Murph, all the coaches, and she works her butt off in day in and out. We're roommates, mm -hmm. so she's Best always leaving the house about 9, 9 o'clock to come up here and put the work in. So as soon as that ball came off the bat, I knew it was out, and I knew that she put us in a better situation to win the game. So I'm just really thankful to be her teammate. James, for both the players, uh, you two come from a elite group of players that have made it to three what is called World Series. Just for you guys, is this one a little bit more special, uh, knowing with everything you all go through, especially with the extra year? For me, I think every year is really special, and I'm thankful for every senior group and teammate that I've ever had to help go to the World Series in the previous years. But this one, being my last year, and everything that we went through, and the way that everybody's just so bought in to each other, and way, how we just genuinely enjoy being with each other, and everybody's just really grateful to wear this jersey. So I think that makes it a little extra special when all 20 of us do. Yeah, and I wanted this one so bad because we had seniors on the team who had never been. And so I knew what it was like to go to Oklahoma City, and I wanted that for my seniors so bad. It is a dream come true, and it's an honor to be able to go to that place and to be able to put on the jersey for another week and get to compete for a national championship. So I wanted it for them really bad. Tommy. Patrick, when you made your pitch and change, you um, embraced Jayla, put your arm around her, and caught with her a little longer than you usually do. Can you share with us what, what you said there? I think, um, you know, number one, you did a great job. You did exactly what we wanted you to do, and she did. And, you know, going into the this morning when we got to the clubhouse, Lance Alley, myself, and Ryan all sat, and, you know, I s said, what do you think is the pitching plan? What do you want to do? And, um, 
Lance said, how about the same thing? You know, so Jayla starts, Montana comes in, and then we'll see how many times through the order Jayla can go. And it just seemed like it was getting to that point. And, and then usually what I say is, go tell Montana she can do it, and the score stays the same. That's the goal of every reliever when they come in the game. When the ball goes to the next girl, the score stays the same. So whatever the score was, hopefully that's the score at the end of the game or whenever she leaves the game. And I'm, I guarantee you Jayla said that to her as she came on the field. It means a lot to me. First, just for the ability to play again. One, I think Jesus for that. And also, we have amazing athletic trainers. And it's not only ours, AC Atinka, the, the softball athletic trainer, but we have I've, every athletic trainer I think that we have here at the University of Alabama has helped us. This, the past couple weeks get to where I'm at today to be able to walk with the brace on and play the game I love. I'm beyond words grateful for that and our doctors and just I'm really grateful that my teammates had my back. They've been pushing me and being there for me and even during the really, really hard times, like right after it happened, I she was in my room until 3 a.m. Sorry, Murph. Um, <laughs> it's probably breaking curfew, but she's telling me that everything's going to be okay and I'm going to be playing again and we're going to go. We're going to go to the World Series, and she was right. And I'll add on that. But Saturday morning after uh, her injury, Jeff Allen, who's the head of sports medicine at Alabama, calls me and talks to me for 30 minutes and says, "This is the plan." You know, he had it all already set in play, a pace, and I was just floored. Um, number one, that he would do that, and he was starting to take care of everything. And Dr. Brett Bentley was with us. And he told the Arkansas uh, doctor, we need an MRI in the morning at 8 a.m. It was a Saturday morning. And somehow they made that happen, which was also key. So everybody had a hand in her healing. Chase. Uh, just to follow up on that, Montana, how did you feel physically, not just today, but Friday and Saturday? And secondly, about the grounder you took, I guess, off the right leg, it looked like late in the game. <laughs> how bad did that catch you? <laughs> I have been telling myself and everybody that I've been feeling like a million bucks for the past couple of weeks, and I'm going to stick to that. I've, and it came off my left kneecap. Um, that's okay. I didn't feel it, and we'll throw some dirt on it later. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Patrick, <laughs> what did you think when you saw it? She didn't say those same things when she got in the dugout, so. <laughs> that's, and I'll leave, it, I'll leave it at that. You guys can use your imagination. Uh, we talked about the seniors. Obviously, not just you're having a moment. You had a moment last night, you should have had a moment. Obviously, you know, you kind of told us you're going to play next year here, but you had a moment. What does it mean for you guys just to have, let the seniors have one last moment, especially after maybe last year the senior moments were a great year? And that's what you want. I mean, and it's, it's, had we lost though, I still would love everybody on the team. It wouldn't have been the end of the world. You know, we, were to learn, we would have learned a life lesson again. You know, it's person first, athlete second. Um, this time we just get to celebrate a little bit more in Oklahoma City and they get to experience a great, great national championship. And uh, it is one of the, the greatest events that I've ever been to um, as a person who loves sports. I've been to a lot of them. And uh, I hope everybody in this room can go um, because it is a great event. And I'm really happy that um, Shipman, Hensley, Prangy, obviously Montana, get to experience it. Just to add on to that too, I hope y'all all saw her interview last night and when she said win, lose, or draw, I've already won with this crew. And I truly do believe that. And I believe with this team, I've already won. One, I know Jesus and he's my savior and I'm thankful for that. And two, I've already won with this crew. I mean, these are my best friends. This school has just brought me lifelong friends and lifelong people who will be in my life forever. So having that peace coming into the game today allowed us to pr play free and knowing that we've already won, regardless of what the score ends up being. In the front, Carrie. Montana, after what you've been through the last couple of weeks, and to be able to get the final out of your final game at Rhodes and to let you a trip to Oklahoma City and getting a strike out of that fight, right after that happened, what's going through your mind? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Just, I mean, if you would have told me that this year in August or January when we came back, everything that would have happened, I would have said that you were lying. But 
I would do it 14 times over again. Everything, every single thing that's happened, the injury, the conversations, the losses, because everything has brought us to this moment. And I think that all of those things is why we're going. And I'm really thankful. And I woke up this morning thinking, like Jenna said, we want to take the seniors, obviously all of us. But I love every single person on this team. And I know there's not a lot of people that's been. And I told them in the <coughs> fall that whenever you go to the World Series, it makes waking up for 5 a.m. weights a little bit easier in the morning, in the falls, and just everything and all the hard work you've been putting in. So I woke up this morning knowing that I wanted that for my teammates. And they're, they are what got me through today. In the back, we care. This is going to be for each of you guys. It's kind of a loaded question, but just the fact that the story, you're still writing it. But that same sentiment, just that this, these two weeks and what this has meant, especially this series, at this moment, what is this game going to mean to you guys when you look back? Well, like, like Jenna said, we, we have peace in knowing that it's already written. The story is already written, and all that we can do is keep faith and trust and buy into each other and give 100% effort in every single play. And it may be tiring and long and a long season, but all we can do is keep the faith and trust. And I think it was Sydney Littlejohn that told us that a couple weeks ago. She wrote us, and she said that the story is already written. And I think that stuck with a lot of people, that we just can have peace and knowing whatever is meant to be is going to be, and all we can do is give our whole heart to it. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what came to my mind, too, is it's already written. And this game was a whole lot of fight. You saw a whole lot of fight from both teams, honestly. We both wanted to wear the jersey one more time, and we're fortunate to come out on top. But I do want to share a little story about a little extra motivation that we have this year. And I'm wearing this bracelet for Madeline, and she's a little girl who's fighting cancer right now. And so she's been on the forefront of our minds all season and somebody who we've been praying for. And I know a miracle is going to happen in her life. and so. Since she's been fighting and going through chemo and all the hard things that come with cancer, we know that we can fight too on the field. And so she's been a motivation for us and somebody that we are praying for every day. And I think for me, it's going to be a team that I'm going to um, use as a reference to grit, to resiliency, to um, a great group of followers because uh, leaders are like eagles. You only see one at a time. You only need one really good leader but you also need 19 really good followers to follow that leader. Everybody thinks you have to have everybody be a leader. That's not it. You need one really good one, and then everybody else follows the leader. And she's been a great leader. And it's just going to be, you know, time and time again, there's so many things that happened this year that I'm going to say, and they're probably going to hate it, but I'm going to do it anyway. In 2023, <laughs> and then I'm going to tell the story. Kennington. Coach. Two-part question on your pitchers. First, uh, holistically, how can you quantify what Jayla has been during this run and then to see Montana be able to, to battle back from an injury and contribute in a major way? What does that mean to you? It's just unreal. And, you know, you got to give credit to Lance McMahon, our pitching coach, because he's done a heck of a good job this year to step in um, for a great pitching coach than Stephanie Prothro. And, I, I think that's, I think, overlooked a lot because, you know, here comes a new pitching person with new ideas and new pitch calling sequences, and he's got to learn all the pitchers. they got to learn him. And then, you know, once they get comfortable, you see what happens. But um, just to see Jayla's um, coming out party is just unreal. And everybody got to see it. I mean, the whole country saw it on live television the last two weekends. Um, we all knew that she had it in her. Uh, I think she finally believes she does too. That's the key. She believes in herself. And then to have Montana is kind of like the relief specialist. I mean, who wouldn't want a more time All American as the reliever? Uh, you know, and that's got to be tough for another team to you know look over there and says, oh, we got rid of the starter, but who's coming in? Oh, Montana Fouts. I mean, that's got to be a, a punch in the gut uh, to some hitters on the other side. Um, but I thought it was a really good combination. I think our other two pitchers, that's going to be a good combination. So I'm excited about what all four can do next week in Oklahoma City. Two more, Gary. Murph, looking ahead, because you played the late Sunday game, you got to get out there, get track up pretty quick turnaround Thursday. First, do you like that? Secondly, you play the conference team, don't know what's going on this Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, uh, they had a great year. They uh, double dip. They won the regular season, and they won the tournament. They swept through their postseason in Knoxville. They're a heck of a good team. You know, we took uh, one out of three up there. 
played pretty sloppy in the third game, but we know that they have great athletes, a great pitching staff, and uh, you know we played them before um, at the World Series, so it's nothing new. Uh, I think the turnaround time not a big deal. I don't know what time we play on Thursday, um, but we'll be ready to go. Last one. Last one. Montana, career win number one hundred for you today. Well, I, they told me that outside. I had no idea. So somebody buried the lead. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you guys. I, like I think Ruth said, I think we should. I I would love a story on on this and just the faith and trust and the way just things have fallen. And I'm I'm beyond words to be honest with you. I like Jenna said, we we could have lost today and. I've already won. Thank you, ladies. Thanks, guys.